Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we got a fun job it looks like. Uh, this tanker we parked here probably a month ago and about a week after I parked it here, you can see this tire completely flat. pretty unfortunate uh, since it did drain the air so quickly uh, we're gonna have to take this thing off and get it repaired it definitely needs needs some help especially since it went down so quickly so we're gonna be taking this tire off this afternoon uh, we grabbed the wheel loader put the portable air compressor in there just has a gas engine on there pumps those two mini tanks full pretty quickly so that thing's super handy we're gonna start by pumping this tire all the way up which is going to lift the suspension up underneath here Otherwise, we're going to have to jack that bar, that axle up so much higher. Whereas if we just pump this thing up with air, it'll bring it up quite a ways for us already. And then after that, we're going to put some blocks underneath it and jack it the rest of the way up, which is going to allow us to take this tire off. So we're just going to take the entire rim off and everything, bring it into the tire shop. Hopefully they can just repair it, which will just be a couple hundred bucks. But if they have to replace the entire tire, that's going to be pretty unfortunate. It's going to cost a lot more money, a couple thousand bucks probably. But uh, that's the way she goes. Tires don't last forever. And especially when you build a new building around the farm, you know, my dad always says it looks like those construction workers are just walking around with handfuls of nails and throwing them everywhere. But uh, I'm sure that's not actually the case. But you do end up with a bunch of nails and screws and all that kind of stuff laying around the barns. And unfortunately, this is a side effect of building stuff on your farm. But uh, we're gonna get to work here taking this tire off. Just like that, we got the tire off. We'll just leave it on the jack stand here until we get the tire back. Hopefully it's fixed. And uh, throw this thing back under. So now we're just slowly making our way back to the shop. Put it on a truck and then we'll take it to Saskatoon and get fixed, hopefully. You guys can see that's our lagoon right there. She's filling up pretty decently already. By the time I pump this out again, there's gonna be three feet of manure in there again, so least maybe even a little bit more three and a half feet maybe so it'd be good to get her down one last time top's frozen right now but uh, next week it's supposed to be up to plus 10 again so hopefully we'll be able to pump it down a bit more sweet our mechanic will probably take that to the city and uh, drop it off at a tire shop. Well, we got the tire off of that manure wagon. That's the first thing I wanted to get done this afternoon. Second thing, I wanna get the insulation louvers in these exhaust fans at the back of the main cow barn here. You can see, if I just pull these open, maybe you guys heard that, a ton of wind comes in. It's basically those chimney fans suck air out and then they pull the air in through these louvers. They do stop most of the air from coming in, but still a lot gets in here. And they need some extra insulation behind there, 
just for the winter it gets too cold outside and uh, you got to make sure it stays nice warm in this barn because there's literally a water bowl right there so if there was a ton of cold air to flow through those louvers the, those two water bowls in the back here would just freeze right up right away so and then in our electrical room over here we got the insulation bats so yeah this is where we were keeping them these are for the straw pack barn there and then these ones are for this barn two go in each fan and they're basically just an inch thick of insulation So we got the two insulation bats in there now and this is the fun part trying to get them lined up nicely We don't want any air coming through there when it's that cold outside, you know that minus 40 We want to keep that outside and if there's any cracks like this in there It's still gonna come through we're gonna feel it. It's gonna freeze in the back here So we got to make sure every single one of these is lined up as good as we possibly can get them Awesome. I'm actually really happy with how easily that one was to line up. Hopefully they all go like that, then it won't be so bad. Just got them level in the middle here. We'll get those louvers back on and that was the first one. Well, uh, we got the first five fans done and uh, some help showed up here. Hey guys. <laughs> If you guys remember, he uh, dropped off that Fent 942 earlier this summer. We played around with that a whole bunch. So. Oh yeah. Uh, he's gonna help me finish off the last five fans here, so. Do a little work. Yeah, put him to work. <laughs> Well, we finished off all those fans, so uh, thanks for the help. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> He's got a YouTube channel too. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it already, but it's uh, Full Line Austin. I'll put it in the description down below. It's getting pretty close to a thousand subs, so uh, see if we can get him there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> well guys, we are still in the main cow barn. It's quite a bit later though, and uh, I'm gonna get Dima to lift me up in the wheel loader. Right up by these doors here. That's the loader right outside the door. He's gonna use that to lift me up. I'm gonna spray some of this rust check lubricant on the um, steel, all the exposed metals on there, the chains for the automatic door openers and those springs. And I think there's the chains there too are kind of rusting a little bit. We just wanna protect everything. Um, this is what my dad picked up from the store. I don't know, I've never seen this stuff before. So we'll see how it works. And uh, we just wanna make sure with how humid these barns get in the winter time, it, it, incredibly humid, everything just gets covered. It's wet and any exposed steel that's not galvanized is going to rust out really quickly within a matter of years. It'll all rust out in these barns because in the winter time it does get so humid in here. So before it gets too bad in here we figured um, spray with some lubricant, protect it and hopefully it'll last longer. Eventually these doors maybe will start breaking down in 10 years or something in the middle of winter and we really don't want that to happen. We have to get through here every single day and a little bit of maintenance is going to allow us to do that for a lot longer and not have to worry about these doors breaking down. basically tension up and there's a wire at the bottom of the door and it helps the door opener lift the door all the way up but these are just exposed steel and you guys can already see they're 
pretty orange. It's because they're rusting right out. So hopefully this is gonna kind of help them last a bit longer. Awesome, that's the three main doors in this cow barn. All those chains and the springs are lubed up, so hopefully that's gonna save on them. Good morning, everybody. It is the next day. We're gonna put the bats and the exhaust fans in the parlor and pack barn. But uh, last night, we actually got some rain. It was warm enough for us to get rain instead of snow yet, which is pretty unusual. It's pretty warm for this time of year. It's looking pretty nice out there. Got the farm truck here in the sand room and we're just gonna load up the rest of the bats so we can take them over to that parlor barn. There's three exhaust fans per side. Three over there, three over here. And uh, these are a lot more interesting to get those bats into simply because the fans are a lot higher up off the ground. At the back of that barn there, they're quite a bit lower and I can easily just get those bats in, but here, quite a bit taller. I didn't put all the clips on all the way up high, so I, all I have to do is take the clips down here off. So that'll make it easier just doing it from the ground here. Hopefully I can get them lined up good enough and then we can put those louvers back in after we get those bats in there. We'll see, see how it goes. Well, we got the two sets of louvers in there back. This one needs a little bit more convincing. Uh, it's still just a little bit of room in here. So we're gonna hop up on the loader and try and kick it in a bit. Well, that did the trick. Now we can get these clips back on it. Well, Dad got the auger pulled up to the dry distiller's grain bin there. There's a B-train showing up right away here. We're gonna unload it. So that's the B-train, same as the P-hulls. So one of these trucks has two main trailers. So each one of these trailers has two bays in it. And you can see we're unloading the front bay of the back trailer here. We already did the back. These things carry quite a bit. So this is the hopper on our auger and the guy needs to drive forward slowly and I need to kind of roll this hopper underneath the truck as he's driving forward so we can get it far enough in to unload these hoppers and uh, into the bin. I'll put the camera down there and you guys can watch me do that for the next load. 
really nice when there's no mud, just smooth ground, then that thing rolls nicely. But if it's muddy or it just snowed or the ground is super rough, it's pretty sketchy because it's pretty hard to get that thing moving. Pretty nice full loads. And it's going straight into our new bin. So I don't have to move it anymore once it's in there, only into the feed wagon, which is awesome. Got that B train unloaded. We're gonna go have lunch, then we'll uh, park that auger in the shed. We're fully ready for winter now. Winter can come and we'd be good. Um, but funny enough, today it's gonna be like 10 or 11 degrees Celsius, pretty warm. Um, I'll find out what that is for you American viewers. Hey Siri, what is 10 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 10 degrees Celsius is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's how hot it's gonna get out today. Uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit literally means nothing to me. I never would have guessed that in a million years that 10 degrees Celsius was 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, anyway, that's pretty warm to keep these barns in winter mode. But I can't open these panels up or turn the exhaust fans on because I already put the insulation bats in there. Um, usually around this time of the year also, it's quite a bit colder. We're almost into November now and to get plus 10 during the day is pretty warm. So we weren't prepared or, you know, you never really expect this, but what you can do and what I'm going to do now is open the front and the back doors in the main cow barn here, just to let a little bit more air into here. Cause otherwise it's going to get pretty hot, pretty humid, just real stuffy in here. And if I open the front and back doors, it's going to let quite a bit more air pull through this barn here. It's going to be a lot nicer for these ladies in here. We'll just leave them open all day. Kind of feels like springtime almost. Just the smell, the weather. But so oh, we're not going into spring. <laughs> if you guys made it so far in the video, comment down below, bring it on. Because we finished up the couple last touches that we needed to get done before winter time. And if it was minus 40 tomorrow, if that kind of winter weather showed up, uh, we'd be good to go. So that's awesome. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. You guys can also check out the Instagram, at SaskDutchKid, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.